first position and St. George's University requested my presence here for two weeks and the Fulbright Agency engages me and pays me. So I'm a government employee for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So tell me about some of the initiatives. What are you going to be doing for the next couple of weeks here? Uh, we started yesterday at T.A. Mary Show, mm -hmm. and we are hosted there by Professor Andrea McLeod. Mm -hmm. So we are working with her students and invited students. Uh, these are teachers that have come from Karakou. Well, we have six people present here mm -hmm. for the workshop for that. This week we're doing monotype and mono printing. I brought a small printing press and they're making watercolor monotypes this week. Mm -hmm. could, you, could you explain that for those of us who sure. are... Sure. A uh, monotype or monoprint is a one-of-a-kind print. They'll make a painting on a substrate, and in this case, it's a piece of plexiglass, mm -hmm. a plate, a rigid plate. Right. And that will run through a press with a piece of paper on top of it. Through pressure, that image will transfer to a piece of paper. Yes, so become a one-of-a-kind artwork. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, fabulous. Um, the role of art in education, I think that was supposed to be the focus of the discussion this morning. How important is art in education? It's essential. Mm -hmm. um, artists are people that can access the creative part of them. And creativity in any profession and in any lifestyle is very important. We teach resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. We teach how you work within just a few options to create a lot of possibilities. We don't accept no for an answer. We don't accept failure in the sense that there's always another option. There's always a solution out there. If you love to make artwork, you love to problem solve. So we expect these built-in challenges in every project that we take on. And we learn how to challenge ourselves when the teachers stop challenging us. So these are essential lifelong learning skills and thinking mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. And we call them critical thinking skills. We also interact with each other towards a common goal. So we learn to work together and we learn to help each other and enable each other and right. assist each other. So these are essential skills, people skills, social skills. And we help build self-esteem. We help people to understand how they learn and to be able to learn more effectively. We have to look at what we make as artists and objectively observe how we can improve it. And we help each other through a dialogue and interaction, mm -hmm. assist each other how to improve what we do. So these are really people skills, social skills that we teach. Right. Yeah. In terms of um, creativity, you talked about about accessing uh, that 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 part of your your brain or what have you. Do you think that uh, most people that are artists, um, they were born with that that intuitive or that you know that skill or that within them, that creativity within them, or is it something that could be developed as you, can someone learn to be a, a great artist? Oh yes, that's mm -hmm. the right part of you. Mm -hmm. The left part of our brain is the logical and rational part. Mm -hmm. The intuitive part, the creative part, is our right brain. And anyone can learn to shift and depend and nurture the right part of your brain. I think we we need to use both halves, <laughs> yes. and but most people really depend on their left half for the most part. So the answer to your question is I think people are born with that intuition, getting in touch with it. They're easily accessing the right brain, but people can be taught to do that. I have students in a beginning drawing class, and I teach them how to see and how to perceive like a visual artist. And that really is the process of getting them over to depend on the right side of their brain to extract information from but what I they can, see. Yes, I can see how training and the ability to get in touch with that right side 
especially when you're already very good, that can create a, a holistic, a positive benefit for a student um, participating in, in, in your courses and so on. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. it really creates a sense of self-esteem in someone when they learn how to do that. It's, yeah. it's fantastic to watch that in the students and, right. to, and just to see the light bulb come on. Right, yeah. right. So could you detail for us exactly what you're going to be doing? Is there anything you'd like to share with us, something we have not captured in the discussion so far? that? Um... Uh, this week is printmaking. Next week mm -hmm. is uh, the painting workshop. And the whole workshop idea is taking just a few resources. And, and this is true of Grenada as well as many other places, but yeah. your resources can be very few in the arts. Uh, supplies are difficult and challenging to get. So I'm showing everyone how they can take a few things that are locally available, a lot of possibilities to really turn that into a lot of options. So within those, within those constraints, we're learning to be very, very resourceful. So we don't feel limited. We feel like the doors are opening. On Thursday evening, I'll give a public lecture that I'd like mm -hmm. to invite everyone to come to. That is at St. George's University, mm -hmm. and I believe that is 5 o'clock in the evening. Which, which room is that going to be? Uh, I, I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. It is the lecture hall, yes. Okay, the lecture hall. I suppose um, persons can actually contact the university correct and find out exactly yes. which yes. room it's going and it's going to be Thursday at around 5 p.m. yes okay no problem mm-hmm so go ahead you said oh uh, I'm done okay yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right so on Thursday there's going to be a lecture give us some details in terms of um, what exactly persons can expect when they come to that lecture this is where I'm really going to elaborate on the importance and essential importance let me realize that mm -hmm. that the arts play in nurturing someone in the arts. I think the stereotype is really out there, and it's worldwide, but I think it's very strong here that someone cannot survive in the arts, someone cannot make a living in the arts. So it, it, it might even be discouraged, and I know a lot of parents have concerns. But this is something that should be celebrated in someone. Um, there are many, many careers, so jobs are not going to be anything that interfere with the success of your child or if you're interested in the arts. I think what we do in a fine arts education is we train the whole person. We nurture the whole person. We teach them how to, how to think. We teach them how to survive. We teach skills that are survival skills for an artist. So they learn to paint well, yes, they learn to draw well, but they learn how to they learn how to sculpt, they learn how to print, they learn how to draw, they learn how to do so many things, not just the computer. And hopefully but, they would learn how to market their work and how to take their work out to exactly. exhibitions and so on and, exactly. and, and get paid for what they do. Uh, exactly. So we teach them that what they do doesn't come free, that they have a business sense about it, they have a self-esteem about it, they don't sell themselves too cheap. And all these skills with all of these tools can translate into an individual that is educated, skilled, adaptable, and flexible. That's the type of person who will be able to live in a contemporary global population rather than a teaching someone a simple skill and a simple tool where they're going to change their career every five years on average. We want to train and educate the whole individual so that they have the coping skills in the engines to adapt and change in a mm -hmm. global universe. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. because you're right when you, I mean, if uh, our kids come to us and say, I mean, in this context that I want to be an artist, mm -hmm. immediately a parent goes into, yeah, that means that he's a, he or she is going to be staying home for the rest of their life. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No. So it makes you very worried. But um, from what you're saying here, from what I'm gathering, is that um, you teach people to develop the, the whole and to be able to fit into what's happening in the global environment. Anyways, um, I just want to thank you, Professor Ash, for stopping by.
And is there any way that um, persons uh, from the adult population who are not necessarily enrolled at the T. Marshall Community College, but who is interested in your lectures, who is interested in getting some, some, some uh, what you'd say, some lectures or what have you from you or training, um, can access that or? Yes, we're, we're doing these workshops Monday and Wednesday of next week mm -hmm. and continuing today and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And we're in the art room on campus. Okay. And they could probably contact Professor Andrea McLeod mm -hmm. to get information or call St. George's University and speak to Oliver Benoit. Right, right, Oliver Benoit. Um, he's into art as well. Correct. And you said that this week it is going on, well, today, because today. It, would have, it would have been Monday, Tuesday of this week. Correct. And next week. Correct. Right. So persons can contact uh, Oliver Benoit or Miss Andrew McLeod at the university Correct. and see how they can um, uh, benefit from what's going on yes. there. Well, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you so I much. I do appreciate that. Uh, folks, I was just speaking there with Professor Ash, and of course, um, you would have gotten a perspective as it relates to art right here in Grenada. Currently, she's working with the students of the T. Marshall Community College, and yes, it's quite hot warming. Um, you can actually make a living <laughs> from art. <laughs> That's great news. Um, don't forget uh, that there is a workshop going on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of uh, next week. It is continuing this week, so you can call the university. You can speak to Mr. Oliver Benoit. Of course, you can speak with Andrea if you'd like to be a part of this whole discussion. Don't forget that Professor Ash, she's also so going to be doing a lecture down at the university. Uh, it is it Thursday of this week? Yes. Yes, it is Thursday of this week, and you can find out a lot more about art if you are interested in that. It is 5 p.m., and again, you can come to and they will give you details in terms of which lecture hall it's going to be taking place at. Folks, you're in Spice Morning. Let's take a break. When we come back, more lively discussions. <laughs> Grenada to the world. The government information service continues its journey, reaching out to new platforms, highlighting public issues, and the work of government in action. A new glitzy website has been launched to achieve the goal of sharing information to readers and viewers everywhere. News.gov.gd is the new GIS website, updated constantly with information, progress in government, reports, Press releases, pictures, newsletters, news on demand, live GIS TV online streaming, GIS TV and radio programs, the popular Spice Morning with Janice, constantly updating and informing on public information. You can also download the GIS TV app on iTunes Store and Google Play for free, straight onto your Android smartphone or Apple iPhone. News.gov.gd is the GIS new glitzy website. Log on. Mom J, it's a cultural theme. Experience the goodness of the spice Friday nights from 8 to 9. Culture at its best. A way of life of customs and traditions. Mom J, hear the stories, listen to the music, witness the action and the old talk. A real Grenadian cultural experience. Mom J, a product of the Cultural Foundation. Welcome back to Spice a Morning for today, November the 5th. Yes, it's Tuesday, and the week is going very quickly. I can't believe it. Almost a week gone in November already. It seemed as if month end was just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep up these days. Uh, before the break, we spoke to Miss Elizabeth uh, Ash. Uh, that is Professor Ash. And of course, she is an educator 
in art. And uh, now we have Mr. Daniel Murray. And Daniel is here as part of the week or the energy week activity. And he's from a company called X Lead. And he's going to be talking to us about uh, conservation of energy. He's going to be talking about his company's relationship to the energy sector. Good morning, uh, Mr. Murray, and welcome Hi. to Spice Morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. It's You're fine. doing fine? Mm -hmm. It's basically a pleasure of being here. Right, right. That's that's great. So where are you coming from? Which part of the island are you coming from? Basically, I'm coming from Grand Islands. 